Hello, everybody. We are at 4.59, letting everybody get on, get online, ready for five, which it is now, but we're gonna give it just a minute here so everyone can find their way, including me. Alright, looks like we got some of you guys on here now. Still appreciate that we have a habit of commenting in the comment section, I appreciate it. Um, I'll give it just a month, another, and then, and then another minute here. Okay, so today we are going to go over PPE. Before you roll your eyes and say we've gone over this a million times, uh, it's good, important information. Um, I think you guys will get something out of it today, or at least something you didn't know somewhere. Um, so anyways, PPE, somebody tell me what the purpose for PPE is. Anybody online? I only have one person in here that I'm still sitting in an uh, answer from, so. Okay, good, last line of defense, yes. So its purpose is to protect you when all other controls fail. So therefore, just like you say online there, yes, it is your last line of defense. That is your safety focus word, bam. Safety focus phrase is Last line of defense. Okay, continuing on. So, do we have examples from uh, previously our company in the shop of improper use of PPE? Eh? Yes, we do. So, how about when you take load lines off and crude spills out and you weren't wearing your safety glasses? There's a good example. Right, Kyle? Yeah. Yes. Of course. <laughs> so, safety glasses are important. Number two, any examples in the field from our company of improper PPE use? Kyle? Using their H2S monitors. Monitors, yes. Safety glasses. Safety glasses, yes. Um, FR. FRs, yes. I mean, do we have any specific examples? Obviously, we know the two uh, our monitor incidents that we've had. Specifically, I have guys wearing hoodies that are not FR. Hoodies on the outside that are not FR. So, I have another example here for you guys. Uh, I am going to warn you, it may be a little graphic. I Last time I didn't warn you about that, you guys had a fit. So, if you have a sensitive stomach, it may bother you, but it's not that bad. Um, so, this is an example not only of why it's important to follow safe work practices and procedures, but also the life-saving effects of PPE. So this here is my husband Bryce. Um, his first picture on the left there is his first day in the ICU. Uh, fun fact for you guys, uh, the skin burns for 72 hours after an initial incident. So for three days, your skin just continues to smolder. And basically what they do for those three days is they put you in an indu in, in induced coma to let it basically smolder out. Uh, after that, Every day they take you into a bath and they use a wire brush to scrub your burned skin to get the dead skin off. Um, so basically what I'm saying is this sucks, number one. Number two, um, these guys were doing a routine task. They'd done hundreds and hundreds of times this summer that this happened in 2013. Uh, just like you guys do every single day, same thing day in and day out. Routine task, they've been cleaning these heater treaters all summer. Um, but this job, this one tank, was different than the rest of them that they did. 
It had a baffle on the other end, so they went and they were also using an impact gun. So they went to take that back manway off, use that impact gun. It had, still had crude and H2S in that back baffle area. Um, and that spark blew up that heater treater they were in. So 27% uh, of my husband's body was burned and 28% of his buddy standing next to him was burned. Um, third degree, both of them. My father-in-law, Scott, was standing at the door of the heater treater and the flames went all the way to the front of that door as well, burned both of his arms and he also inhaled the flames, um, burned the inside of his lungs. So you can see in these pictures, that top left one there again, uh, where that proper PPE that they were wearing did save him. So you can see where his hard hat was and right where his safety glasses were as well. Um, I don't have pictures right now, but even to this day today, you can see exactly where the short sleeve FRs ended. Um, this is why it's so important for you guys to be wearing those long sleeve FRs as your outermost layer when you're out there. Um, he's got scarring all the way down his hands or all the way down his arms, exactly where that left off. So it's important to wear those. Always make sure that's your outermost layer. Um, if you look at these pictures again, imagine if they weren't wearing safety glasses in this case. Um, if that, I mean, it was burning crude oil, right? If that would have gotten into his eyes um, without safety glasses on as well. So that's why it's important to wear even the most minute pieces of PPE, including safety glasses and your gloves. Um, they both burn their hands as well. His buddy had to get skin grafts on both arms um, due to the more severe burning from his. He, he got out of the building last. Um, so we're gonna expand on these different types of PPE that you guys use out in the field. So number one, we have that eye and face protection. Uh, this is going to shield you from hazards like flying fragments, particles, sparks, um, if you're welding and UV light and radiation, and then also those liquid chemicals, vapors, and gases as well. Uh, safety glasses must have that Z87 stamp on them, and they are not approved if they don't have that stamp, even if they meet requirements, and they have to have approved side shields on them as well. Goggles can be worn over your glasses if necessary, and face shields must be worn with either safety glasses or goggles. Should you wear a face shield while working out in the field? Sure. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't hurt. Huh? Wouldn't hurt. No. Yeah, up on the tank. What's that? Up on the tank is a bad idea. Yes, probably not a good idea. Yes, H2S and gases like H2S are denser and they're going to sink to the ground, but you have gases out there as well that are lighter, so they can rise and get caught under that visor and suffocate you as well. So. Not a good idea to wear face shields out in the field, but say, obviously, welding shields are positives, and also if you're working on the shops, like we have them at the Xiling Station, or if you're working on trucks as well. On to head protection. So obviously we have our hard hats here. Uh, your hard hats should resist penetration by objects. They should absorb the shock of a blow, be water resistant, and have that ANSI Z89 stamp and approved on them as well. Um, make sure you're inspecting these when you go out too, making sure you're checking for nicks, scratches, or holes in the shells. If your suspension's damaged, make sure you're getting that changed out and make sure they're not brittle due to any UV damage either. They also have an expiration date. Yes, they also have an expiration date. Make sure you're checking that it's not expired. Next we have hand and arm protection. So the most, most important part about this PPE is knowing what type to wear and when it's not necessary and safer not to use it at all. So can you give me a scenario where it would be safer to not use hand protection? Going down the ladder, you're supposed to have on your three points of contact on the tanks. Skin to skin on the contact. Tanks. Good. What else? I'm looking for a specific answer. How about around moving parts where it can grab your glove and suck your whole arm in? Yes. Okay. So we have different types of gloves too. We have the impermeable, we have rubber, we have cloth, cotton, we have high vis. Um, they all work for different types of things that they're doing. We also have finger guards and arm coverings as well. Moving parts. Thanks. I see you on there. All right. Next we have foot and leg protection. Uh, so obviously your footwear needs to be safety toed, has to be ANSI and ASTM approved as well. Um, don't care if it's lace up or slip on as long as it has decent ankle support and has a good tread on it so you have some traction. 
Uh, some other examples for leg protection include leggings, toe guards, and shin guards as well. All right, lastly, we have our body protection. Those FRs, very important in the line of work you guys do. They protect you against those flash fires, any electrical arcs and flames, and they're self-extinguishing. Um, they, again, need to be your outermost layer when you're working on the field, and they need to be long-sleeved. Um, other types of body protection include fully encapsulating suits, your sleeve protectors, and any cooling garments. Anybody have anything about PPE you'd like to add? Obviously, we also have our monitors. Um, we cover that in respiratory protection, our stage meeting on that. Um, but that is all obviously also required. And SCBA is also classified as PPE. Yes, technically classified as PPE, yes. Uh, your SCBAs, which we also talk about in respiratory protection. All right, on to our monthly safety topic. Uh, again, we're still in resilience during COVID. Businesses are beginning to open back up, so make sure you are continuing to practice good hygiene, um, taking it slow, all that good stuff. Um, make sure you're talking to someone if you're feeling alone or you're unsure of the future or anything like that, if you're feeling uneasy. Our supervisors are out there. They're connecting with you guys to so make sure you're talking to somebody. Operations, I think we're all pretty much aware of the, this at this point. Devin is due in four days on the 30th, so please make sure you complete it and that I have received it. Um, those of you that haven't gotten it to me yet, I've sent out a personal text message to you guys. So, um, if you didn't get a text message from me, that means you have it done. Thank you very much. Uh, strapping tanks, this needs to be done from start to finish on both water and crew. We've had some unacceptable inaccurate tickets lately, so let's get that fixed. Um, also, API standards need to be adhered to. They are pretty straightforward on what's required, and we've been able to tell just by looking at your toolkits tool that steps are being skipped. Uh, supervisors are going to be keeping an eye for this, as well as those on location not affiliated with Prairie. There are eyes all over the field, and they're not afraid to tell us when something is wrong. Um, lastly, vermilion. Uh, we need to slow down in the vermilion fields. There are sheep and new baby lambs out, and the rancher is quite upset at this point, so please be respectful and slow it down. Um, be careful. That is all I have today. Does anybody out there have anything else to add? All right, short and sweet, that is all. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next week. What is the Vermilion Field?